The new Fiend Folio Spitshine update came out recently, uh, like a day or two ago. I don't know how long this video will take to edit. <laughs> But a fair amount was added. A new boss, new enemies, new items, trinkets, and pickups, a lot more! John from Pizza Tower? Yeah. And I'll, you can't forget green. In this video, I'll be showing the cool new stuff the Spitshine update adds. I don't know why it's called Spitshine. I asked. They didn't give me a good answer. It, it won't be too concise or detailed. If you want, like, good, concise, detailed content, go watch a uh, Slag C or freaking Isaac Guru. <laughs> First, we're gonna talk about Madame, the new Gehenna boss in Fiend Folia. Why does she say yas? I don't get it. Who is this guy on the corner? <laughs> she can either start by firing these tears at you, throwing big bloody red skulls at you, and also throwing these bloody, uh, I think they're like gags at you. <laughs> if you get her to quarter health, she'll spawn these little chess enemies at you. She's basically a little chess boss. She's the queen, I think. I don't know how chess works. These gaper pawn-like guys just walk at you, so they're not that harmful. Skip it a button, that up. But you'd also most likely have to deal with these pig guys that charge at you and sometimes kill the- uh, <laughs> Just absolutely demolish the gaper guys. This big chungus-like guy who'll just charge at the walls and sometimes kill the gaper guys too. And you'll also get these weird shooty pillar dudes that shoot tears at you and they're very annoying and they always hit me. Once you kill her guys though, she'll add some more pizzazz to her attacks by like adding brimstone beams to the fight, so uh, watch out for that. Whoa! <laughs> That's so cool. <laughs> She's awesome! She can also end up charging at you while a ball of red blood shoots out tears. This is by far the most, uh, this is like the hardest attack, so uh, be careful. Defeat the second wave of her enemies, fight her one last time, and then you should be done with the fight. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, dude. Oh, they're sad now. <laughs> That's it for all the bosses added in this update. It it might have been only one, but it was a banker. <laughs> I really, really love Mondami, and I can't wait for other people to see her. Now, moving on to the new enemies, we have Mr. Subhorf. Mr. Subhorfs aren't very different from Mr. Horbs, other than the fact that they're subhorfs and they spin around and shoot tears. Mr. Subhorfs also have a regular skin, just in case you find them like outside the downpour. So that's pretty neat. Mr. Gurgles aren't too special, they're just Mr. Horbs that can throw their head and they'll, they'll blow up on you! Ah! It also spawns creep too. Desires are these envy heads that spawn in the catacombs. If you kill them, they split, so be careful about that. They're pretty similar to greed heads, and so are seducers. Seducers are these lust looking guys that charge at you. They can also shoot out tears, so uh, watch out for that. Bleeze are these little looking guys that spawn in the downpour. They're pretty, uh, they look a little, they're little, little cute little guys, you look at that. They also shoot tears at you. They aren't very threatening. They're just cute. I'm gonna kill them. Buoys, like Mr. Subhorbs, also have a regular skin variation. This is only if they spawn outside downpour, but I don't think that's possible right now. I'm not sure. What I am sure about is that all buoys are subscribed to my YouTube channel. Wanna be as cute and adorable as a buoy? <laughs> then click that big ol' white subscribe button. Mag Claudies are tainted versions of Claudies. They're basically in the same like mag family as the mag gaper. He farts out a lot of tears in four different directions, but it's relatively easy to dodge. Another mag enemy to the family is Mag Horf. Mag Horf is a tainted version of a Horf. It's big, it can shoot a big tear at you, and that tear will split into four different shots. It can be quite nasty in certain rooms, so uh, be careful. There's also new pale versions of enemies found in the mausoleum. These aren't they're just pale. Uh oh. Okay, never mind. I I'm scared. These enemies work really interestingly, in that these magnifier things help them grow big and strong just to kill you. They act pretty similarly to mag gapers, mag claudies, and mag horfs, but they're uh, they're uh, they're white, so um, that's cool. These enemies work really interestingly. So when you see a pale enemy, be sure to kill it as fast as possible. You can also press buttons to disable the magnifier too. Flagpoles are these weird looking depth dudes that uh, follow you around with their hanging heads from the ceiling. <laughs> Flagpoles can shoot tears at you and also inch further and further closer to you, so be careful about that. If you kill the body first, the head will fall down and splat into creep and tears. If you kill the head first, the body will turn into one little weird little headless gaper guy. Volts are sucker-like enemies that uh, if you go get too close, it will shock you. I think- oh yeah, right there. <laughs> also, if you shoot tears while they're in that invincibility state, it will try to shock you too, so watch out for that. If you kill them, it shoots a circle of lasers you have to dodge, but it's pretty easy to do so. I like I hit anyway, okay, whatever. The Zephyr is an enemy found in a downpour. He's similar looking to Famine, but he rides in a weird looking cloud. Look at that guy. Zephyr can snap his fingers in a... I think snap. And shoot lightning at you. He can also get his cloud to cry on you, so watch out for that. If you kill him, he falls down. Lol. 
Sagan Spits are similar looking to Sagan Suckers, but they shoot Ipecac shots out. They spawn in the corpse, and they can be really tough if given like a small room, so be careful. Holy Claudies are just that, holy versions of Claudies. They spawn in the cathedral and shoot up purple homing shots at you. Those homing shots can be pretty nasty to deal with, but they're overall pretty easy to dodge. Also, don't stand too close if you kill them. They shoot out big beams when they do that, so uh, don't, uh, don't do that. Pillar John's not the pizza tower Pillar John, but he's just a brown rock guy in the mines. Pillar John spawns barriers that block Isaac's way. You can kill these barriers of other enemies or just use your bombs. He can also attack you by smashing the ground, so be careful about that. You can't really kill Pillar John, he's more of an obstacle you have to deal with. Beacons are tainted versions of bulbs. Those weird guys that suck out your charge and are really annoying. <laughs> Instead of sucking two charges like bulbs, beacons suck three when they hit you, so uh, be careful about that. Beacons can actually give you negative charges if you have less than two charge pips. Good enemy! <laughs> the good thing is that you can juke these guys out. They'll hit the wall and be dazed for a bit, and that's your time to strike. And the last enemy that got added, and wasn't even in the patch notes, was Tainted Craig. Well, he's not called Tainted Craig. He's called Roy Drald Derekot the second. Derekot? I think it's Derekot. Roy will follow you around in an increasingly large Tech X circle. After that, he'll continuously shoot a big laser at you, so watch out for that. He can also turn off the lights in the room, so that's also scary as well. When you kill him, he gets electrocuted and blows up. Very nice. <laughs> He's awesome! Fiendfilio never disappoints with new enemies it adds. They're always so cool and interesting and creative. I love this goddamn mod so much. But that's not the only thing they've added in the Spitshine update. They've also added a couple of new items too. The Loaded D6 is a very interesting and powerful new item added in the newest Fiendfilio update. It has the power to reroll any current item in a room into one of your items. This could be especially useful if you have like a good item like Brimstone. Look at that! Big, uh, put that in your YouTube thumbnail. The loaded D6 might seem overly powerful, but it can also be pretty weak if you have a fair amount of low quality items in your inventory. It weakens the more you're in a run, as you have more items to account for. I got lucky in this example and rerolled into the pact, but I could have gotten something like milk from that reroll. Oh no, not milk. Good item. I like it. Definitely worthy of being a quality 4 item. Fiendfully really doesn't have that much quality 4 stuff, so that's pretty cool. Next up, we have Isaac.chr, a secret room item. Also a Doki Doki Literature Club reference. Oh god. It gives you an extra life. But the catch is, when you die, it replaces some of your items of TM Trainer items. <laughs> okay! Oh my god. Also it does this animation, I'm scared. I wouldn't say this, I, I wouldn't say this item is the best, but it can be good in some situations. Maybe you just get like shit, I don't know. Next up we have Gamma Gloves, a shop item, which is a reference to this one gif <laughs> of the Hulk. Gamma Gloves is a fun item. It's an infinitely charged item that you can use a billion times. It creates this shockwave that pushes away enemies. Use that to your advantage. This item is definitely pretty great when it comes to groups of enemies or enemies that run and charge at you. But I would use this item sparingly. The shockwave can be pretty disorienting. I would say use it when you know an enemy is walking close to you. Also, this item does not push away tears. It only pushes away enemies. So, uh, take note of that. Dad's Battery is a pretty interesting devil room and shop item. It allows you to use your active item more than once, even when you don't have charge. It's an item similar to the fiend failure item Dad's Wallet. Dad's Wallet allows you to accumulate debt when you buy shop items with no coins, but in turn you get a multiplicative damage down when in debt. Dad's Battery works pretty similarly, but instead of giving you a damage down, you get a massive slow and shot speed down. The debt goes up to 12 charges, so keep that in mind. Thankfully, this debt isn't forever. You can get charges back by exploring rooms or getting batteries, so it's all good. Torture Cookie is a really fun treasure curse and red chest item. It's basically the same as Fortune Cookie, but instead of giving you like, I don't know, some of that advice, it just insults you and takes away half a red heart. Though, you can get black hearts, reverse tarot cards, and rarely trinkets. Think of this as a blood bag that can sometimes give you black hearts. It's kind of good actually. Also, some of these Torture Cookie fortunes are really, really funny. I think my favorite one is You Wouldn't Survive the Simpsons. What does that even mean? You can check out all the Fiendfolio Torture Cookie Forgings by looking at the resources file in the Fiendfolio files. They're really funny and I highly recommend you check them out. Isaac D's Eulogy is... an item. A quality 4 item? I don't think it's very good. Well, quality doesn't matter that much actually. But it shouldn't be quality 4. <laughs> Isaac D's Eulogy makes it so whenever you kill an enemy, there's a luck-based chance for any dice in Isaac to proc. Yes, 
any dice in Isaac. That means you can get Fiend Folio dice or the D4 and D100, but it's only a 1 in 10,000 chance for you to reroll your entire run, so that's not that bad. It's a really, really wacky item, and it's really fun though, I kinda like it. Isaac D's eulogy scales of luck too, with 0 luck having a 10% chance to activate, and 36 luck having a 100% chance to activate. I wouldn't say this item is run rooting though, but the D10s can be pretty annoying. If you don't know, Fiend Folly adds two different D10s, one being the new item. This new item is the Dusty D10. It works how the regular D10 did before it got buffed. So it sucks. Just don't use Isaac D's eulogy when you're fighting like, I don't know, Duke of Flies or else, or else you just like die. <laughs> Isaac D's eulogy is a very wacky secret room item, and I kind of love it a lot. Most people don't know this, but Isaac D's eulogy is a reference to probably the most important Isaac mod of all, Team Domination's A Dicey Adventure. Why does he look like that? This mod adds Isaac D, an important super new character that basically does the same thing as Isaac D's eulogy. Though, Isaac D as a character is way more chaotic and waggier than Isaac D's eulogy. Isaac D's eulogy is basically Isaac D, but like, Playable. <laughs> Isaac D as a character isn't balanced like Isaac D's eulogy, so you can just have like a 100% chance to D7 or D4 or D100. It's kind of awesome. Isaac D's Isaac D- Oh my god, my mic, my oven. Hi. <laughs> Isaac D as a character is not as balanced as Isaac D's eulogy. He's a Joe character and it- he's pretty obvious. <laughs> I don't think Isaac D is actually beatable in the first place since he tends to reroll your entire run all the time and spawn like D7 all the time. It's horrible. Uh. But enough about Isaac D. This is the Fiend Folio Spit Shine up they were talking about, not Isaac D. <laughs> Next item is a shop item, the Brick Figure. The Brick Figure is a fairly simple item that gives you two Fiend Folio collectibles, the Stud and the Brick Separator. The Stud is nothing new and has been in Fiend Folio for a while now. For those who don't know though, the stud is basically a fun little coin referencing the LEGO games. This coin, when collected, activates a sort of dull razor effect on Isaac. This means he doesn't take damage, but he still gets hurt. Like you just stepped on a LEGO in real life. You can use this for items to activate whenever Isaac takes damage, or you can use it to go to curse rooms for free. Edit in the Spit Shine update though is that you can finally stack studs, though you can only stack them up to 6 times. The brick figure also gives Isaac a higher chance to get studs in regular rooms, as they have a 20% chance to replace pennies. So that's pretty neat. Picking up the brick figure, you also get the brick separator. Think of the brick separator as a one-use meat cleaver. It also gives piercing tears when you use it. The next item added in the Spit Shine update is Gold Sheet Lunch. Gold Sheet Lunch is a boss item. It gives you a heart container and also gives you a pretty good speed up when rooms are cleared. It's definitely a really good item if you want to backtrack. That's pretty much it though, it's a pretty simple item. Also, I think it's a reference to the like one horse anime. I'm not <laughs> I don't know why I don't watch anime! Twinkle of Contagion is a fun one. It's a reference to that one YouTube show all the 10 year olds like. Twinkle of Contagion is a fun treasure room item that adds a 50% chance for any enemy in a room to have this glowy effect. If you look at the glowy effect, you get this funny little scream and your sprite changes. You can't see enemies are blocked by grids or rocks though, so keep that in mind. This effect gives you a 1.5 damage multiplier, a tears up, and a luck up. It's pretty freaking good. <laughs> It goes away after a while though, but can appear once again with a different enemy in the room. Also, if you kill an enemy with the Twinkle of Contagion effect, it will transfer to another enemy, so you don't have to worry about that. Twinkle of Contagion is a syringe that also adds to the spun transformation, so that's another upside to the item. The token bag is a new unlockable item in the Spit Shine update. I emphasize that it's unlockable because I had to learn the hard way that you had to unlock it. This token bag is really, really good if you use it correctly. It's quality 4, a treasure room and secret room item, and as it says in its name, the token bag spawns, well, tokens. These tokens shoot out of the bag every 10 rooms. Tokens are penny-like consumables that copy the last consumable you just collected. For example, I collected a nickel in this room, and when picking up the token, I get another nickel back. Neat. What makes the token bag so busted though is that it can copy up to things like dimes, batteries, sacks, cards, pills, Runes and even trinkets. Tokens can't be duplicated by year though, so a no huge YouTuber thumbnail game breaks for you. 
By the way, to unlock tokens in the token bag, just grab a thousand pickups in total. So pick up stuff like coins, bombs, keys, etc., and then you should get it eventually. The green orange is a very simple yet very powerful item. It just gives you good damage and tears up, and also drops a soul heart on the ground. It's a pretty good boss item, but also it turns you orange, so uh, I don't know. Pretty big downside. Being orange, I don't, I don't I wouldn't want to be orange. Reheated pizza gives you a new heart. Also, um, it turns you into Peppino. <laughs> Alongside giving you a new heart container, it also gives you a little uh, heart pickup when you go to a new floor. Ain't that cool? These hearts aren't set too, so you can get red hearts, soul hearts, eternal hearts, black hearts, gold hearts, blended hearts, bone hearts, rotten hearts, and even fiend folio hearts like immortal hearts and morbid hearts. Also, if you pick up reheated pizza with fiend, it turns into the noise. <laughs> and if you pick the item up with tainted fiend, he turns into a. Uh, Fake Peppino, ugh. Reheated pizza is a very nice health item, and also a really funny reference to Pizza Tower. According to a developer though, this wasn't entirely a case. The Pizza Tower reference was added later because it was funny. He Heated's Cookbook is a new two-charge active item added in the Spitrun update. And it's a pretty freaking good one. If you use it in a room, it makes it so enemies that have the lowest HP in the room get immediately killed. They explode into a shower of white projectiles. Neat! You can't kill bosses with it though. For some reason, when you use it against a boss, it makes a hmm sound? Mm. Wait, why, why does it do that? <laughs> One of the craziest new items added in Fiend Filio ever was added in the Spitshine update. Say hello to the new secret room item, Error's Crazy Slots. Error's Crazy Slots makes sure you know item IDs, as the active item relies on you knowing item IDs to get a crazy item. You want death certificate? You just need to time it well. And also know the item ID, which is a 628, oh my god. Yeah! <laughs> Woo, okay. But uh, don't, don't be like me and mistime it every single time. Fuck. Heads up though, if you enter in an invalid item ID, you will be sent to an error room. Error's crazy slots only works with three numbers. So if you have a mod that boosts up the item count of the game to over 999, it won't work with those items. But maybe one day it will if Fiend Foley adds more items. I don't know. Also, if you use Error's crazy slots, you can't actually pause scum. So lol, good luck. Sculpted Pepper is next, and yeah, it's a Pepper Man item! <laughs> I should stop. I should never sing again. Honestly, though, Scolded Pepper is okay. Yeah, like, it's not that great, but it's still kind of cool. The item drops a statue randomly in a room, and you have to break the marble in order to reveal the whole statue. There's three statues in total a Maggie statue that charms enemies and gives you tears up all in the aura, a statue of a buff guy that gives you a damage up and makes enemies bleed while in the aura, and a statue of Fiend that inflicts others with fear when they're in the aura. The Fiend statue also has the ability to rarely give you crit tears, just like the item Imp Soda. Sculpted Pepper also recharges while in the room, and when the active item is fully charged while a statue is still there, it breaks that statue and then places another one down. Basically a good refresh if you don't care for the statue you already have. But I feel like this item isn't that great because the statue takes too long to break. I end up getting distracted trying to break it. Me getting distracted can cause some hits too, but I think that's just a skill issue on my part. How do you guys feel about this item? Be sure to say in the comments and I'll give you a good reply, maybe. Hopefully, yeah, probably. And the last item that got added in the Spitshine update that isn't a secret or anything is Too Many Options. Too Many Options is a really unique secret room item. It looks like the three options items, but with an exclamation mark instead of a question mark. Oh, insane. What Too Many Options does is that it replaces all special rooms with a rule of three rooms you can pick. Special rooms like shops, treasure rooms, curse rooms, sacrifice rooms, and even devil and angel rooms get replaced. The rooms Too Many Options can give you are treasure rooms, shops, curse rooms, sacrifice rooms, arcades, libraries, planetariums, angel rooms, devil rooms, bedrooms, and error rooms. Though, this can be bad. You tend to get a lot of like nothing special rooms. Rooms that don't really give much. But you can get like angel rooms on floor one, so maybe things aren't like that bad. Also, trying to time Isaac going to a room is a little bit hard as you can often go into the wrong special room. But here's a pro tip, try hugging the wall and right before the room you want to go to switches, go for the kill. You can also use pause strats, but like only losers do that. I'm a loser. I, did, I still didn't get in where I wanted- Too many options and all the other items added in the special update were amazing and I can't wait to see them in a run. But if you thought that was the end for the items of Spitshine update ads, you'd be wrong. We still have all the trinkets and golem rocks it adds to overview. Like this trinket, Fuzzy Pickle. Which is a reference to Earthbound. Oh my god, oh I love it. Fuzzy Pickle is a new trinket added in the Spitshine update. It's a really funny one. And really complex too? It gives you a 0.1 damage up when you pick it up, but it can be increased if you pick up items that have references in them. 
For example, 1UP is a reference to Super Freaking Mario, and BBF is a reference to... Ooh. Every reference you have gives you a 0.1 damage up, and it goes away if you drop Fuzzy Pickle too. Also, active items give you a 0.5 damage up, so that's pretty neat. Fuzzy Pickle also works with Trinkets if you have Mom's Purse, which is a really cool synergy, because normally you wouldn't get Mom's Purse or Fuzzy Pickle. Also, it works with like 60 plus trinkets. Oh my god, are the devs insane? The Fushiki trinket is a relatively simple trinket. It just gives you a chance to fire an Eye of an Occult-like tier. This tier does more damage, so that's cool. That's really it, though. It scales with luck, so you have a better chance to fire these tiers if you have a lot of luck. Nesting Doll is the fun trinket. See a beggar you particularly don't like or vibe with? You can kill him, and then there's a chance another smaller beggar will take its place. Any beggar can take the place, including Fiend Folio Beggars. You can also bomb the smaller beggar, too, to get another one if you're lucky. It's like a little uh, Russian nesting doll, how, how fun. Eggpenny is a nice one, it gives you a chance to spawn a Fragile Bobby when you pick up a coin. Fragile Bobbies are from the item Bag of Bobbies. They are little brother Bobby-like familiars that can take damage and also die. These Bobbies can come in different shapes and sizes too, which affects their damage and rate of fire. The chance to spawn a Fragile Bobby depends on what coin you're picking up. Picking up Nickels and Dimes gives you a higher chance of spawning one. This flower trinket is new. Memes aside, the Duds Flower is a pretty neat trinket! <clears throat> oh my god, what was that? It replaces every single one of your bombs with copper bombs. If you drop the trinket, it goes away. For those who don't know though, copper bombs are a new type of bomb that the Fiend Folio mod adds. They're neat bombs that tend to do that. But when they do explode, they do a massive explosion that does a ton of damage. Think of it like a Mr. Mega explosion. The Duds Flower is really good if you have a good look of copper bombs. But uh, but I don't. Oh. No. No. <laughs> Fails worth. Failing <laughs> Andy. Oh, I, th I wow. think this is a bad omen. This actually got into the game as a room, so thank you, Feed Folio developers. I guess. <laughs> and the last trinket Feed Folio adds, kind of the last trinket. We still have the rocks to go over, but those aren't really trinkets. Is the bomb token. I love the noise. The bomb token makes your bombs more powerful. Instead of doing a base 100 damage, your bombs do 200 damage. This trinket is super powerful if you want to insta kill certain bosses like Little Horn, Duke of Flies, and the Whispers. Isn't Duke of Flies already died from bombs? Shut up. It can also power up the Dr. Fetus item too of 1.5 times multiplayer. In this comparison, you can see that without the bomb token, you do 35 damage instead of the 52.5 with the bomb token. You can also power up Mr. Mega Bombs and even Copper Bombs. This is a Mr. Mega Bomb, Copper Bomb, and Bomb Token Synergy. It does that many da- <laughs> It does that much damage. Also, this footage was recorded when I was streaming. If you want to join, I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Uh, usually, like, I don't know, like, 3 p.m. CST or 1, 1 I don't know. Next up, we'll be talking about the new Golem Rocks added to Fiend Folio. Golem Rocks are these trinkets? They're not really trinkets, they're more so their own thing that Fiend Folio adds. Only Golem can get them. And they range from being, like, neat upgrades, neat trinkets, to being actually better than regular items? There are a total of 11 new Golem Rocks added in the Spitshine update, but first we'll be talking about the new Community Rocks won by the people who won the Gauntlet Challenge in under 20 minutes. Yeah, this was a thing. Uh, they actually got new rocks, which is fun. Think of the Gauntlet as a boss rush type challenge in the Fiend Folly mod. It's definitely one of the toughest challenges the mod has to offer, and you had to beat it in under 20 minutes to become stronger than Golem. Definitely pretty tough. You and I tried. <laughs> and failed. By the way, shoutouts to all the Gauntlet winners for all the cool new rocks. These rocks are so cool, and the developers did such a good job translating them into the actual game. There are five gauntlet winners, meaning five new gauntlet rocks to play with. The first being Atlas's Burden. Atlas's Burden is a golem rock that gives you a speed down, but in turn makes it so a huge boulder drops on enemies. This boulder slows them down and deals pretty heavy damage, and when you kill the enemy, the rock falls down and spawns rock tears. Pretty cool trinket! Atlas's Burden also works against bosses. It's pretty good too, as it sticks to the boss itself, so use that to your advantage. Lost Artifact is seriously one of the best trinkets in the entire game, and I love it because of that. Lost Artifact spawns these little fairies to fight with you. These fairies differ in size, with the smallest one looking like this little guy, and the biggest one looking like this big old chungus. You can get these fairies after completing rooms. Usually in normal rooms you get these small ones, which just fly around and shoot tears. They also have names! You can press tab and they can have names. They're like randomly generated, I think. This guy is called Loon and Miss Ultra Ka. The best names. These medium ones spawn in big rooms, and sometimes smaller ones, but like kind of rarely. These medium guys sort of uh, sort of combust into tears. <laughs> and lastly, you can get this big Chungus guy after defeating bosses. And they do this. 
There is also secret lore to these guys. If you check the fiend file your files, you can find a text document. Right here. So there is the tale of the Mama Fairy. Mama Fairy has lots of baby fairies. They like copying other animals to play. Their best friend the, the, their best friend was the pink cat. They copied the games of the pink cat, and they all followed the pink cat. The pink cat had a big pink heart, and a nice blue ribbon, and a great yellow star. One day, Isaac remembered this fairy tale. In the basement. I don't know what I just read. And also, there, there's Sans. Pocket Rocket. Oh my god, it's like rocket and rocket, oh, no way. It's a new golem trinket that makes Isaac shoot rockets that homing onto enemies. This item is affected by luck too, so the more luck you have, the more rockets you'll shoot. The rockets you shoot come in many different colors, and these colors do specific effects too. Yellow rockets shoot a burst of 9 tiers that go into random directions. Green rockets create a ring of 8 tiers that pulse, you know, up and down. Black rockets do this wide orbit thing of 6 tiers. And finally, red rockets create a cluster of tiers that look like... Aw, oh, they're sad they're like now! <laughs> Rocket shaped. Ridiculous Metal is a very good rock trinket. When you go to a room, you get this bar in the middle, and you have to fire your tears exactly at the right time. If you time it just right using that one bar in the middle, the entire room takes damage. This absolutely clears and shreds early floors, as many of the enemies don't have too much health. Think of this as a toxic shock you actually have to work for. If you get all the timings of the beast exactly right though, you can get a boost in your stats as well. Neat! This boost only lasts for a room though, so it's not too great, but it is pretty good for boss rooms. You just gotta focus and actually be good at like timing things. Unlike me. I suck. Also, your damage scales a ridiculous metal too, so if you have high damage, you can fully clear a room without any effort. Oh yeah, and the music notes flying around is definitely a reference to Mother 3. And I love that so much, because Mother 3 is one of my favorite games of all time. Wormhole Rock is weird, but so cool! Think of the Wormhole Rock as the portal gun from Portal. You can shoot a tear in it, and it shoots a tear out. That's not all though, the tears, when shot out, get a variety of properties. Sometimes the tears get bigger, split, and have some other warm effects and properties. You can even put bombs in, and they can have random effects too. And it's only tears that affect wormholes. Brimstone and Mom's Knife and probably other tear effects don't work with it. The wormholes also explode into tears after a while. Yay! Unfortunately though, tears can't pass through the wormholes more than once. You can't have some funky tear shenanigans where the tears phase through reality from going too fast, unfortunately. Also, sometimes this cupcake snail appears. Hi, cupcake snail. Also, on very rare occasions, you can get a little fox guy. This fox guy is the OC of the crater, Honey Fox. You can get a honey fox worm too. Oh. oh I killed it! <laughs> That's all for the community rocks though. Congratulations to all who won. I'm not jealous. No, I'm not I'm not jealous. No 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 no. Next golem rock we'll be talking about though is Top Rock. Top Rock is the complete opposite of Rock Bottom. I think everyone knows how Rock Bottom works, it just makes you unable to have any stat downs, which is really, really good. But on the other hand, Top Rock makes it so you can't get any stat increases. Oh no. Thankfully, if you don't want your stats being neutered, you can drop the rock, and you'll get it all back. Okay, but you may be thinking, what's the point of Top Rock if it doesn't do anything good for you? Well, it does. It gives you a good stats up when you pick it up. Uh, but that's really it. This is definitely a good rock for the early game, or if you just have no stats, but not really so much for the late game. Just try not to smelt this golem rock, or you just die inside. Arachnite is a fun one. If you pick it up, instead of getting blue spiders, you get rock spiders. These spiders can even be flame and hot coal spiders, or even tinted rock spiders. But the tinted rock spiders are pretty rare. This rock is really damn good if you have any spider generating items like Keeper's Kin or Box of Spiders, but without any items like that, it doesn't really do much. Oh my god, the hot died. Hollow Fossil is a fossil. Fossils are neat. They give you cool stuff if you crush them with this guy. For example, you get a 100% deal chance when you crush Hollow Fossil. And I own a black card, oh my. Hollow Fossil also gives you a nice damage up. This rock trinket is cool because it gives you a choice. Want a good damage up? Or do you want a black card and a 100% chance for a devil deal? Saint? Or Grunch? Lithopedian is... Lithopedian. It gives you the stony guy. A stony guy. <laughs> Ah! He pushes around enemies, which sucks, and it hurts you more often than not, but sometimes he also blocks shots. I, I think the hitbox is too small, though. I'm kind of glad this guy is only for Gollum, because having this guy as Tainted Lost or the regular Lost is a... It's kind of... Yeah. I, I wouldn't recommend picking Lithopedian up. I, I would say he needs more time in the oven. Literally, he's like a, he's like a rock. It's kind of like a reference, you know? 
Homoerotic Ruby is next, and it's a pretty good one. It gives you fire tears. Thankfully, these fire tears don't explode like fire mine do, so that's good. That's not all though. If an enemy is a woman, they have a chance to enter a berserk mode. In this berserk mode, they attack other enemies and deal a full heart of damage to you, so watch out for them. But after they're done, they explode. <laughs> okay, okay. How do you know which enemy is a girl and which enemy isn't? And yes, these two enemies are different. <laughs> well, uh, Fiend Folio has that covered. With female identifier mode. Every time you enter a room with a woman, this happens. Woman. It surely woman. doesn't get annoying. Woman. 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 But it's pretty useful to know if you have this item. It's pretty funny too, I, I, I gotta admit. Homo Erotic Ruby is pretty cool, but what makes it even cooler is the item interaction of Sapphic Sapphire. Whoa. This is a very cool reference, and it makes a pretty powerful trinket too. Gay Garnet is what you get from this transformation, and it combines the strengths from Homo Erotic Ruby and Sapphic Sapphire. You get Sapphic Sapphire's Ice Flames, ability to charm women, and Homo Erotic Ruby's ability for women to go berserk. This rock trinket is insane, and if you're lucky enough to get both Sapphic Sapphire and Homoerotic Ruby, pick it up. It's really good. Last but not least though is Jesus Rock. Jesus Rock is simple, it's just an extra life. It's an extra life that fully heals you, yeah, but it also gives you three soul hearts, which is really good. It also works if you're the lost too, but good luck getting Jesus Rock from characters that aren't Gollum. I mean, you can use Gollum's Rock, which is an item that gives you rocks, it, like rerolls rocks, but that's really it. Thankfully, we're done with all the items in the Spitchin update, but we're not quite done with Gollum, as there's three new Gollum merchants in this, uh, it's, uh, I forgot what it's called, what is it called? Okay, it's called the Subway. Guys, I know things. Trust me, please. I'm, I'm just a guy. Also, these three guys are pretty cool, aren't they? <laughs> three new Subway traders appear in the Subway now. Bobby, Metarizer, and Sweet Puss. We'll be talking about Sweet Puss first. They're this little, little, little pig. Kind of similar to this one pig called Sour Puss. Sour Puss and Sweet Puss. Are they siblings? Maybe? I don't, even, <laughs> I don't know. If you give Sweet Puss a rock you have, they'll give you a fossil in return. If you give them a fossil, you'll crush it and activate its fossil effect three times at once, which is really good. For example, the Thank You Fossil, which gives you a judgment card when crushed, will give you three judgment cards if given the Sweet Puss. Thank you, Sweet Puss. And then, and then he just kind of disappears. I don't know where he goes. Next is Miterizer. Or Meteorizer? I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> if you give Meteorizer one of your rocks as well as 10 coins, they'll turn that rock into a golden trinket, which is really nice. And then, uh, then you'll just like... Go to sleep, I don't know. <laughs> just want to interact with you anymore. Just don't give a dirt clump to Meteorizer, because that, that just does literally nothing, and I feel like I'm a little idiot. And last but definitely not least is Bobby. Bobby's... Look at them. I love them so much. <laughs> They act as a, some sort of devil deal person, giving you the opportunity to use one of your red art containers for a rock, which is very cool. Dude, I love him so much. Bobby works similarly to a devil deal, so you can use Keeper's Bargain, Pound of Flesh, and your soul to get something good. Bobby can also sell you up to three items, which is nice, and they can also give you golden trinkets as well, but getting golden trinkets is so rare. I tried it for like an hour, I didn't get any. These guys are very funny. I, I love I love their designs. I hope we see more traders like this in the future, but I think the guys we have right now are awesome, and I don't think we need any more. The Fiend Folio Spitchin update adds a couple of new batteries and new bombs, let's, let's, let's talk about that. But the no batteries only give you one pip, well, what, what's even the point? <laughs> Curse batteries take charge away, this sucks. My charge! Oh, okay, I can give charge back, okay, that's not, that's not that bad, I took, I took it back. Virtuous batteries make y'all holy and shit and give you Book of Virtues wisps. Firework batteries, you'll shoot little fireworks, oh, that's kinda cool. There's also double copper bombs which are new and not double copper bombs which are not new, and also a copper bomb and a the regular bomb too, that's, uh, that's revolutionary. And also, uh... Time's up, oh, well, I'll see you next time. The Fiend Folio Spitchon update has been massive so far, but surprisingly, we're not done talking about all its content yet. Don't worry, we're almost done though. Vending machines are a fun little guy added in the Spitchon update. They basically act as a sort of one-use active item that you have to pay for. For example, this vending machine right here has a book of a while in it. If you pay three cents, you get the power up. Vending machines only have active items in them though. And depending on the active item, only last one room. So keep that in mind when you use one. A very cool room with a vending machine has got to be this downpour secret room, which has a 33 cent R key. Though, it's not that OP, since when you counter it, you'll probably be about like 5 to 10 minutes into a run. But it's really cool that something like this is possible. Or you could, you know, explode the machine of cursed pennies. Why are there cursed pennies here? Vending machines are also an unlock. You need to use 5 different active items in a run to get it, which is a very interesting way to unlock something. There's also some hidden goodies and secrets in this Spitchin update, like some unused items left in the game. There's Warm Insignia. It just gives you 0.02 speed. 
very good item. I do like how it's the coolest though. That's that's very neat. For the one person wanting to know how I just like, exploded into bits and pieces, you have to go to the fiend folio settings and turn kill bind hotkeys to enabled. Now just press delete and you just die. And last but certainly not least is fiend's third leg. Hmm. Fiend's third leg gives you a massive 1.5 tiers up, a 3.33 damage multiplier, homing tiers, creep, and a 100% chance for tiers to spawn a fiend minion. You can't actually get it. Yeah, you can't even use the spin down dice nor a death certificate to get this item. It's purely only a thing you get by using a debug console, which is pretty funny. Also, it shreds bosses. Like, look how it fares against Hush. You can also spawn so many minions, your game will just, uh... You know what I said last, but certainly not least? I lied. Kinda. This item isn't really an unused item, but a tainted item. Fiendfilia has compatibility with the mod Tainted Treasures. If you have the mod installed and pick up the item Community Achievement, there's a chance for a Tainted Treasure Room to spawn on the floor. If you go inside a Tainted Treasure Room while having Community Achievement, you get Spelling Bee. Spelling Bee is super cool. It gives you stats depending on your seed, but you have to sacrifice the very good damage up from Community Achievement. For example, picking up Spelling Bee right there gave me a boost to my tiers, shot speed, speed, damage, and range. It gave me these stats because my Isaac seed is T P. H T R P G V. The letter T gave me shot speed and tears. P gave me shot speed and speed. H gave me shot speed. R gave me tears and range. And G gave me damage and range. The letters correspond to the stats. But did you notice that V didn't give me any stats? That's because the letter V doesn't appear in any stat words. So it just gives you nothing. There's a downside to this item though. If you pick up the item when your seed has lots of numbers or letters that don't really do much, you gain stat downs. Bad letters don't really do anything, but numbers specifically decrease your stats. So watch out for that. Spelling Bee also gives you consumables too but really those aren't that great compared to like actual stat increases. Spelling Bee is very situational and you have to make sure you have a good seed to pick it up. It kind of reminds me of Libra in a way as instead of getting the huge damage up from community achievement you get a variety of stats which is very cool. Talking about secret enemies, there's Sloth's Head which I think has like four rooms with oh. a 0.25 chance oh my to God. spawn. Okay, um, this is a very rare enemy. Here I found one of these rooms on stream. There's also new dogs in the dog folder for this pitch and update. Thank you so, so much to everyone who waited for this video. It took, me, it took me a long time. Not because it was like impossibly hard or anything, but because I'm just a, I'm just a slow ass editor. <laughs> I'd like to especially thank Impix for the uh, amazing thumbnail art and comments for the art in the beginning. Both him and her did such a good job and we love them both. I'd also like to thank the Fiend Folio team for making such a good Isaac mod. Some people may think Isaac modding is coming to a close, but nah. I feel like things are just starting to heat up. Also, Hero would like to fight all the enemies in the Spitchin update. Here we go. Okay, 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 there we go. Now we can, um, fight all the enemies here. It shouldn't be, uh, terribly difficult if you know what the creatures do. Which we, uh, just gone over, by the way. 